everybody. Welcome back to another episode of DadCast. I am JP. That guy is Nick Martin. Nick, how are you? I'm all right, man. How you are doing you? Okay. I mean, I'm, let's check in. We haven't recorded a podcast oh. in about a week and a half. <laughs> and uh, how's the health? How are we feeling? What's going on? Any news to share? Um, yeah. So I went to a neurologist yesterday and yeah. got some scary news, but we have a game plan. So that's good. Um, they're checking me for aneurysm. Um, basically, the neurologist was upset that they didn't check me in the initial scans to if I had an aneurysm. And he's like, 90% sure you had an aneurysm and you're probably going to have another one. So, uh, oh, well, that's, so uh, tomorrow I go in for a lumbar puncture to also rule out spinal meningitis. Thanks to Brian's lady, Nicole, for bringing all that stuff all right. up and finally push the doctors to get those tests done. Um, so I'm going in tomorrow for that. And then shortly after that, I'll go in for another MRI. Um, and basically I'm, taking a lot more time off of work. I, the last four days, I haven't really been able to get out of bed. So it's been a little weird, a little rough. Oh, but. Man, well, you know, your whole team is rooting for you, brother. And we're glad you're here with us, doing all right. If there's any issues or you got to go, that's cool. Just, you know, disappear. You know, okay. I always got this. Cool. Today on, and what, I, I'm sorry, that's just, just a sad way to start this thing. Let's turn it around <laughs> real quick. Uh, today on DadCast, we've got a couple of guests. One, you know, one is a first timer on DadCast. I'm going to introduce him first. Please welcome, formerly of the band Saliva, former front man, and just an amazing all around guy. I've heard a whole bunch of stories from our friend. Please welcome to DadCast, Mr. Josie Scott. Hello, sir. How are you? What's going on? How are you guys doing, man? I'm so glad to be here with you. Oh, we are stoked to have stoked. you. As I mentioned yeah. off the air, your hat is the best hat I've seen in the history of hats. Uh, as you can see, I'm a Raider fan, so that, that's the well Raider done. Set I can get behind. I I can wear that. I, okay, I would be okay with that. I'm gonna get you one then. I'm gonna dial okay. that in. And also, I know you're probably gonna be in Vegas in about a week. So probably, probably. <laughs> also on the show, welcome back, our friend, our compadre, uh, our man in the podcast world, the host of Heroes Journey podcast, and the front man of the band Elvis Monroe. You know him, you love him, Mr. Brian Hopkins. What's up, bud? <laughs> Well, that's an introduction, man. Thanks. I'm out. That's, that's where I'll <laughs> <talk>. see ya. <laughs> uh, as you know, Brian is a yeah. frequent uh, co-host slash guest on the show. Um, I will tell you right up front, Brian, it is okay to interject at any point in time and talk as much <laughs> as you'd like on the show. Don't feel bad, man. It's all good. Okay. The least amount that I got to do, the better, right? You, you got to make up for okay. Nick over there. Josie, so let me tell you, <laughs> let me tell you a little bit about Dadcast here. Um, if you weren't aware, um, the premise of the show, but it's not centered and focused on. But generally, we like to talk about the journey that is dad in fatherhood, our path, your path, the before, the after, the during, everything in between, dad, and that's what we are gonna, you know, we're gonna talk about here and, and see how it's going for you. And that path is. With that being said, the very first question, a rite of passage right here on DadCast is, are you a dad? I am. I'm six times over. Six a time. Wow. That is impressive. That is keeping up with Nick. That's right. Nick has 87 <laughs> kids. That, that I know about. Yeah. Right. <laughs> well, let's let's run them down, man. Let's let's uh, let's 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 talk. How many? So, of the six kids, how many boys? How many girls? Names, ages, all that good stuff. I have a Brady bunch. I have three boys and three girls. I had uh, a son with my high school sweetheart back in 1991. Uh, Cody, uh, it's 29 years old, and I have two stepchildren with uh, my wife, Kendra, uh, but I've raised, I feel like they're mine because I've raised them since uh, 2003. Um, and they are uh, Brittany, who is 26 years old, and Dylan, who's my guitar player in my solo band in the Josie Scott band, and he is 24. And then I have. Uh, three children with Kendra, a 16-year-old son named Justice, a 
eleven year old daughter named Jordan, who is a rapper called Lil Bridge. <laughs> I love it. And, wow. and a seven year old daughter. Oh, she's a future supermodel, and it just oh makes me want to kill her first boyfriend. <laughs> and and we're way way far removed from that possible date. Yeah. And, right. Amen. I, I know but she's. You can already tell, you know, when they're little, you can already tell they're, they're going to look like their mother and little bridge looks like me, looks more like me. She's gorgeous. Don't get me wrong, but the, <laughs> yeah. other, one, the other one looks just like her mama. And I'm just kind of upset about it. I'm just like, Damn it. I, I you know can tell exactly. She's going to be trouble. She's going to be trouble. I know how you feel, man. And, and to, to track back on that whole step uh, kid thing, um, it's funny. Mm -hmm. We just talked with Matthew and Gunnar Nelson um, and uh, Gunnar. He says he actually gets offended if you refer to him as stepdad. He is adamant. He is dad. And, uh, you know, you kind of touched on that earlier. You, you know, you are dad, man. There's no you don't need to put yeah. all the stepdad in there. That's the few and far between yeah. as far as the girls concerned and the supermodel thing. Let me tell you what my uh, non blood daughter. You know, here I go. It's stepdaughter, but she's my daughter. Uh, she's right. going to be 18 in December, five, 10 and a half, about 105 pounds. Uh, looks just like her mother, who was a uh, Calvin Klein model back in the day. Um, uh, God help me. I'm going through it. And uh, I pray for you, sir, because my, yeah. my heart, my heart's already breaking for you, brother. <laughs> Bro, dude, it, and it's not just that. It's just, you know, the whole the mentality and the attitude, you know, you've been through it already. You know, she's at still in the chalk right in the middle of, I know everything, you know, nothing. And there's nothing possible in the history of your life or mom's life that you could ever have gone through that I go through, which is that right. big, big struggle. Right, Nick? I mean, exactly. Yeah, dude. So but, last weekend I met my 18 year old daughter's first boyfriend for the first time. Right. Well, well, and yeah, yeah, yeah. She has, so, so she hasn't had a boyfriend. She moves back in with her mom and decides Emma. to start. We're talking about Emma? We're talking about Emma. Okay. okay. She, she's dating a really nice Mormon boy. All right. Okay. Like, so my, my cousin knows him. He's a very nice boy, has a nice family. So I, I go over and she's like, Dad, I want you to meet him. I'm like, All right. And I notice Emma has a big bruise on her leg. So, backstory oh. she, was, she was out on a boat with his family the day before. And she fell off the boat and he tried to help her get back up and just nailed her leg on the boat coming back up. So I'm like, dude, you're already beating her. What the hell is your oh, problem? No, say, <laughs> I hope that's the story. <laughs> <laughs> so this poor kid is like almost in tears. He's like, I, I didn't, I didn't, I, I just pulled, I, I know, dude, I'm just fucking with you. It's okay. <laughs> well, just more, know, whatever you, you do to my daughter, I'll do to you. So <laughs> okay. be careful with that statement, Nick. I realized that after she is I an said adult it. and I don't I want to put two and two together and, and I, I paint a picture know. for you, but careful with I, I, your I, words, man. I, I painted the picture later. I was like, damn it. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. And, yeah. So your littlest supermodel there, Josie, um, you said she's seven. I have a nine year old who is also, I think, going to be quite the looker when she gets a little bit older. And she's also and Brian, Mr. Hopkins can attest to it. I love sharing the story is starting to become very interested in singing and songwriting. And she yeah. actually, while I was in Vegas last week, she did it in the span of like 30 minutes from the time I got on the airplane and landed. She had it finished. She wrote half of a song, sang it, produced it and put it behind video. And it was ready for me when I landed. And, you know, it's not the greatest thing that well, to me, it is. It's the greatest absolute thing that's ever happened in the history of music. But, you know, Oh, absolutely. I shared it with Brian and, and, and it was, it was really good. And she's nine years old. So I'm really looking wow. forward to that possible of, you know, her just really grabbing onto that and, and rolling, running with it. Cause uh, mm -hmm. I'd rather her be a singer songwriter and, you know, make music than walk down a runway. Just me. Well, right. Whatever they choose, whatever they choose yeah. to do, man. It yeah. Is, it is. I know. would rather, but I will support in any, you know, whatever it ends okay. up being. But yeah, man, yeah. Oof, crazy this thing being dad is. Brian Hopkins, man, you're so quiet today. You're I freaking hate me out a little bit. I'm, dude, I, I'm listening. This is great. <laughs> this is, this is, I know, this I'm is like, amazing. what the hell is happening? Why Josie, you guys, uh, you know, 
so Josie, you, uh, I, I happened to come across uh, Brian's, I want to come across, I, I follow him and, and look at all his social media. And I saw the interview you did with him for Rock Rage Radio, free plug. Um, and that's where you two met for the first time. Is that? Yeah. But it was like meeting an old friend. That right. Was, that's uh, what I'm hearing. Absolutely was, man. Total, like, like we'd known each other for years. Like yep. we had such an, um, an instantaneous emotional connection. Um, mm -hmm. Like two, just two old. So I hate to use that word. Old. Yeah, souls, it's true. But, I, I, yeah. But man, it's it the best way to put crazy. it. I agree. It was, it was really wild. It was like, we just sat down and caught up, but that you were the knowledge that you were, you know, you were sharing with me why you were doing what you're doing now and, and what it is that you're doing. And it caught me off guard. And, you know, had I did my research on you, it, it was most likely public knowledge, you know, because people had asked me, oh, wow, you interviewed Josie Scott. Did you happen to talk about? And I went, we did, but it caught me off guard. And, and the thing that, that I'm alluding here is we we talked about why you got into music and please share that or why you started back up um with music um now and your project and and it caught me off guard man it threw it threw me it was emotional yeah well your, your... the the thing was when um you know i, I had you know i was waiting on the girls to get a little older Justice is already 16, so he's kind of, he's his own man, and he's uh, kind of on autopilot now, um, but I was waiting on the girls to get a little older, and I was still torn, you know, uh, should I, shouldn't I, um, and and the, the music has never died inside of me, it's, it's my, I call it the radio in my head has always continued to, to write songs and um uh manufacture these moments out of life uh especially being in in love with three different women you know being in love with my wife and being in love with these two little girls life just puts songs in my head all the time so over the past 10 years i've i've written i've written probably two albums worth of material but just didn't didn't know when to pull the trigger on getting back out there and when this situation happened with Cody, um, it was just so fast and, and so aggressive. And, and, uh, cause, cause my son got diagnosed, uh, and was dead 12 days later. He was dead in 12 days. Okay. And I'm going to back you up here. Um, just so you are all aware, uh, who are listening and watching this show, his son, Cody, who is 29 years old, um, last year contracted COVID. Mm -hmm. and uh and then passed away so yeah sorry i didn't mean to interrupt yeah no that's fine uh he he uh contracted it on the 11th and he was dead by the 22nd and um you know uh he w went into the hospital uh they force fed him oxygen i, w I was you know as a father you want to run to them uh and uh, he was actually trying to come and visit us. Uh, and I was telling Brian when he first got sick, I said, Hey, just come on, just come on to Oklahoma from Memphis. And I said, we'll put you in the back bedroom. We'll bring you chicken soup and we'll, 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 we'll take care of you, you know? And if we all get it, we all get it. Hell, you know, we'll, we'll deal with that later, yeah. but, but I want to take care of you. And he said, no, he said, dad, my girlfriend's already got it. He said, I, I'm just going to stay here with my girlfriend. And I couldn't convince him to, to come to, to, to Oklahoma. And, and they wouldn't let me come there because they wouldn't allow me to, to come into the hospital. And I, I think I'll regret that part for the rest of my life is not just going freaking Rambo on them. <laughs> Yeah. and just breaking yeah. the freaking door down and, and coming in there with my baby I think I'll regret that for the rest of my life but so they forced fed him oxygen they, they, they tried to get his uh, I'm sorry 
you know, I was going to say, try not to, man. Like it's, he knows that he knows that you wanted to be there. You already reached out to him. You already said, we'll take care of you. He knows that about you. He knows yeah. that you would have ran through that door. And if he had it that bad, he will, there's no way if he all of a sudden survived it and then you got sick and you weren't here, it's, I guarantee you, like he's, he's looking at you saying, dad, I know you want to be in that room. You don't have to carry that regret around with you at all. At all, dude. You don't. Thank you, brother. I'm, I'm serious. I you, do, you do not have to carry that guilt at all. Thank you. Yeah. So he, um, you know, they were, uh, they tried to uh, do the CPAP mask and, and force feed him oxygen and uh, his oxygen wasn't coming above 85 and uh, they were trying all these different things and uh, you know he was a big guy he was uh, a big guy like me um, and they just it just wasn't nothing was helping you know and uh, so um, on the 11th the on the 10th going into the 11th day uh they tried some different techniques to where he he looked like he was he was getting better uh they said he was testing negative for covid and so we uh had a little bit of hope and we were going to uh my my stepdaughter's wedding here in uh Tulsa at a catholic church and I didn't want to miss my daughter's wedding. Uh, and it looked like he was doing a little better. So we went into the wedding with, with hopeful hearts. You know what I mean? I was just thanking God. And I was like, uh, you know, it, it's going to, it's going to be okay. Maybe there's a light at the end of this tunnel. You know what I mean? And so we went to the wedding. It was a beautiful Catholic service and they did this. They wanted to do it in traditional Latin and uh, so they spoke Latin during during the ceremony, and it was just so beautiful. And uh, we we were me and his me and his mother uh, Kendra were feeling on the up and up, you know, uh, about it. And we went to uh, the reception, and I sat down, and I thought uh, I thought to myself, uh, you know, Catholics, they're they're the the wine is being passed around. So I thought I'm going to have a glass of wine, man. I'm going to, I, I, I'm going to chill and just have me a glass of wine and, and sort of calm my nerves a little bit, you know? And I, I sat down uh, with a cup of wine and my phone just started going. And, and I answered my phone and his girlfriend is screaming, man. And I can't, can't, I can't make out what she's saying. Um, and I, I hear them in the background calling, you know, some kind of code or something. And, and uh, I tried to get my, my wife uh, got on the phone and tried to talk to her. And I said, I'm, I, I, I'm coming to Memphis. I, I, I'm, so I went and jumped in my car and I, you know, doing a hundred miles an hour down the highway, uh, trying to, trying to head towards Memphis. And my wife called me, uh, about 20 minutes into the trip. And, uh, then my wife was screaming and not making any sense and not screaming, but she was making that I'm sound that only, a, only a mother can make, you know what I mean? That, that howl that, can only come from an injured mother. I can't really explain it. Um, and she said, you need to turn around. And I knew right then, man, I, I knew right then I, I felt, I felt, I felt him leave my body, man. I, I, it's like, you know, ever since, um, uh, ever since he was born and I held him in my arms, you know, he was my first baby, you know what I mean? So, like he was the first child I ever had that connection with. And as, as you guys know, being fathers, um, uh, uh, you, you know, that 
that feeling with your first child that you that you feel your heart click you sort of go from being mm. a, a jabroni yeah. who's out there you know just yeah. getting your craziness on you know and, you, and you're just a young man yourself and then you hold something that you made you know what i'm saying that came from your body and came from her body and you and it and it looks you back in your eyes and your heart just clicks um and i felt that i felt that essence leave me and i just started punching the roof of the car and I don't know how in the world I ever turned around on that highway and I don't know how I ever found my way back to that Catholic church, but I, I, I got back to the Catholic church and, uh, the priest that did the wedding was coming out of the church at the time. And he, he saw me in the parking lot and he just came up and, and grabbed me and I just, and I just let out this scream, man. I, I, I like, I can't describe it to you. And I, I, I just went to my knees. Um, but what Brian, what Brian's talking about, not to get all in detail about it, but, and take up all y'all's time. But, uh, Brian, what Brian is talking about is, uh, I, I had a lot of, a, a lot of guilt and still have a lot of guilt, uh, about the situation. And I was like, you know, I'm never, uh, maybe this is my answer. I'm never going to do music again. I'm never going to be able to, how will I ever do music? Yeah. You know, how will I ever walk on stage again? How will I ever do these things again? You know? And I was telling Brian that, uh, like three or three or four weeks into the, the just, awful morning uh that that me and my wife were going to i had this dream and in the dream i was laying on the canvas of a boxing ring and i used to play football i played football for five years so i know what the feeling of blood coming out of my nose and mouth is i know what that feeling feels like and i was just breathing real hard and i was blowing I felt like something was running out of my mouth and my nose. So I took this, the boxing glove on my hand and I was rubbing my, rubbing my face like this and looking at the boxing glove and it was blood. There was blood all over my hand. And I was like, man, I must've got knocked the fuck out by something or somebody. Right. I must've got kicked by a mule or something. Right. And, and I couldn't get up I, as much as I tried. I couldn't get up. I couldn't get up. And I was trying to push myself up off the canvas and I just couldn't. And I felt this presence come down in my ear and it was Cody's voice. And he said, dad, you got to get up. You got to get up, dad. Come on, pops. Come on, pops. You got to get up. And when he said pops, I knew it was Cody and I could feel his breath in my ear. And, you know, as fathers, you know, you smell your child. You can smell their breath. You can smell their hair. You can smell them. And I, I could smell that sweet smell of Cody's cologne and his breath in my ears saying, Dad, you got to get up. You got to get up, Pops. Come on, Pops. Come on. You got to get up. And he was put in, and I felt him pull horse collar me like that. And he pulled me backwards. And when I turned, I was just forcing my head to turn and look at his face and I woke up, but I knew when I woke up and I was covered in sweat and I woke my wife up immediately. And I told her about that dream. And I said, I, I was like, that's, that's the answer. There that's is. my answer. Cody wants me to get up. He wants me to get up off the mat. He, he sees me knocked out and he sees me down and he wants me to get up. And that's him telling me everything's all right. And he wants me to get up off the mat. And from that moment on, I have put everything into getting up. There were two things that I saw that day that you shared part of that story. And you went into depth on this one, on that day. One, I'm going through something with my brother. Every day, the phone rings, I get scared. Because my brother, he's dying. And, but... 
if you ask my brother, he's living. And I said, that's what you're doing. I want you to live your best life every day. And, but and his name is Cody as well. So we, yeah. we, we talked about that, but I watched you take the stage in front of thousands of people and command a stage for three songs. When you got to walk out on stage with your, your old bandmates or two of your old bandmates and take the stage and, and graciously the singer gave you a great introduction and you walked out and you like, you helped build this. And you were, it gives me the hair standing up in my arms because I got to watch and sing along and video the whole thing and love every moment of it. And knowing that he's right there, he's right there with you. Uh, I'm Native American Indian. I believe that you had a vision and that's what it was. And when I know when you walk when you walked in that room with me, it, you know we were we were joking because you're bending over grabbing my knee like we were old friends, you know, stretching out, getting ready to do the interview, and you know, and I got to witness that. I got to witness you take that stage again, and and that was a huge special moment for us to be a part of. Everyone there, whether yeah. they knew what they were watching or not, Amazing. so. You need to chase. You need to chase those moments and be out on that stage every day, and let that radio in your head just continue to speak to everybody and keep sharing this. Because the more we talk about Cody, the more he's not going to be forgotten. He's going to be loved and and remembered and a part of everything that you do. So, right. Yeah. Along with for what you was saying too, like just I watch the videos and. I've seen you live a couple of times and you've, you've played Medford, Oregon, I think twice back when you were still in saliva and just seeing your presence on stage at the, the Rock Ridge Fest, dude, I was like, holy shit. Like there's like something came over you. It was, it was incredible. So yeah. And we all know yeah. the answer to what came over him. Yeah. Uh, gentlemen, yeah. I'm sorry. I don't mean to interrupt this beautiful conversation. Um, pretty deep. This is the end of part one with Josie Scott. You want to check out part two, make sure you comment, like, subscribe up the channel, hit that bell. So when you see part two drop here in just a few days, uh, you won't miss a thing. Um, we'll be right back and we'll see you soon on part two with Josie Scott.